Hey, a few days ago, famous chemistry channel Nile Red did a video about refining or recovering gold from old computer chips and computer parts. And in one of his videos, he introduced the Stannis chloride test. He used Stannis chloride solution to detect precious metal solution. And if you perform this test, it will result in a color that is distinct for every precious metal such as platinum or gold. And what you need is basically Stannis chloride solution. And in this video I want to create it. And this is a theoretical impossible way. It's I want to create it using electrolysis. My positive electrode is actually soldering tin, but it's the lead free just for health reasons and it's an alloy of 97% tin and 3% copper. And the negative electrode is an iron nail and I brushed it to remove the oxide layer and according to the galvanic series the potential the over potential of hydrogen on iron is 0 0.15 volts and the potential of tin is 0 0.15 one four volts and only the reaction no I have to say it another way the reaction with the smallest difference in the potential will occur so if I want to create stannous chloride and not to electrically refined tin I have to make sure that the over potential for hydrogen is as small as possible and that is why I chose iron. I could choose gold or platinum because then it would be theoretically possible but I don't have it. So let's give it a try because these over potentials are not always very precise and they differ from the size of the electrode. And maybe there is a chance to create stainless chloride solution. We don't have to care about the copper because it is more precious than tin and it will simply fall to the bottom as powder and we can remove it using filtration later. So this is basically a water bath. I put in these two electrodes, there is no current at the moment, zero voltage. Oh, that's smelling bad. And the only thing I have to do is adding hydrochloric acid. At the moment I am using a pretty empty bottle, so there is a lot of hydrogen chloride vapor that is biting into my lungs. But there is not needed much. I just add a small bit because I don't want to consume all the tin but you have to make sure that you don't consume all of the hydrochloric acid either because stannous chloride in solution is only stable if there is some hydrochloric acid present. So I'll add a small bit. See the vapors coming out? That's hydrogen chloride. I think that's enough. And before it starts to react with the iron, I turn up the voltage. Amazing. Immediately the current starts to flow. And hydrogen is produced. I don't think it's very important if 
you use a specific voltage I just turn up the voltage to make the reaction going a bit faster but at the moment everything seems to be perfect because only hydrogen is produced and we don't electrorefine tin because if we would electrorefine the tin would be oxidized here and reduced at the iron nail and so we would basically just purify the tin and get rid of the copper I could do this as well but this time I want to make stainless chloride solution which I have to ensure that only hydrogen is produced here you see I modified the setup and basically we are running on 5 watts at the moment 5 volts and 1 amp and there is pretty nice hydrogen production I checked it for tin but there is no sign that tin is being electrified so I hope we are lucky okay five minutes later and I am frustrated because it is actually electro refining tin yes exactly what I thought did occurred no fortune this time the table seemed to be correct 100th of a volt that does prevent me from creating stainless chloride solution but no matter I always wanted to purify the tin so the only thing that will happen in this reaction is that I will separate the tin from the copper in this alloy so we will get rid of all the copper and then we will be left with whatever 99% tin I think that's a good deal if you now think wait there is still hydrogen produced so why are you frustrated you will be left with the stannous chloride as well yes that's true so maybe we are double lucky and get pure tin and stannous chloride solution so this is pretty much something that should not occur in theory because we are reducing two elements at the same time let me show i pull this out here and this is definitely coated with tin at the moment it doesn't oh, on camera you can't see it that well but i can tell you this is plated with tin so the impossible is done two elements with different potentials are being reduced at the same time seems to be just randomly so I always ask myself why does this not happen with sodium chloride solution I think in school everyone said the sodium is not reduced it's basically the hydrogen that is reduced cause of the potentials okay but what would happen if sodium is being reduced sodium metal would be created and this would instantly react with the water to form hydrogen and sodium hydroxide so you can't actually defer if both the sodium and the hydrogen are reduced or if only the hydrogen is reduced and the sodium will stay as iron so here you can clearly see that it is possible that at least if the potentials are more or less overlapping due to the incorrectness in the table that both elements are reduced at the same time very impressive would not for this is possible actually again two minutes later 
the tin on the negative electrode already starts to form some ugly crystals. They will grow over time and I'll show them later. It seems as tin crystals are growing at the bottom of the electrolysis box and actually my eyes start to tear and I start to uh, have breathing problems. I think that's because of small quantities of hydrogen chloride that are released and after playing a bit around with the magnet turned out that the white clouds that are formed below the tin electrode the, the white stuff is tin oxide or tin oxychloride or whatever and the tin ions are basically invisible but you can see these blurred lines in the water because of the density difference and that's actually where the ions are dissolving and they do react to a magnetic field actually they do react to this shitty magnet sorry for that I was not able to record this on camera because its resolution is actually full HD but the resolution is too bad so maybe you can see these blurry lines right there you see there's always a bit blurry uh, crap I don't think you can see the magnet, the ions reaction to the magnet. And yes, the hydrogen production decreased. Don't like it. Maybe because the surface of the iron did shrink and now coated with this tin fur. And I think the white powder they have created is actually tin oxide because oh, I don't get focus on this now if there are thicker particles they have a slightly yellow tone and this is a clear sign that it's tin oxide okay some aftermath here I think the results are extremely interesting. First, this browny reddish powder that sank to the bottom is, I believe, a mixture of copper oxide and copper. And yes, it should be done with copper. And I said that this is all the copper that is separated from the alloy of the positive electrode. But even more interesting is the zinc. It did grow some crystals but it created mostly some kind of foamy structure and this is because there was still hydrogen production in the tin and this led to a structure that looks like this. You see there's also some hydrogen bubbles coming out and this is really really strange. It seems that it's not very strong actually, it isn't. It fell off. But it's a clearly foamy structure.